Okay. So, I have uh, something recording locally, so hopefully that will work. I have OBS running locally. So we should still be able to publish this to YouTube ideally afterwards. Um, but we are going to start, albeit a half hour late. So there are issues and we're working on hoping that this can directly live stream in the future. So welcome to the first Monero Coffee Chat. Thank you for joining us. Um, so this Coffee Chat is just the purpose of which is for people to get to know some of the community members and developers behind the project in a way that's more personal. And, uh, and it's going to be mostly informal so that people can feel free to ask questions and so forth. There's a chatting function here, so make sure to open that in Jitsi so that you can make sure you get all your chats and so forth. And then, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the basis behind these. In our chats, we want to have a monthly group of people meet together in order to is in order to just talk about some of the stuff we're on Monero. So first, uh, how do we go through introductions between the people that are here? So I'm Justin. Uh, people know me as SGP on uh, Reddit, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Plan, Reddit, SGP, and all the other things. And I'm a student at the University of Minnesota. I have a student group here, and I run the community meetings with Monero. So how do we keep going down the list? Uh, Paul, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I don't, it didn't seem like I was the next one on the list, but, um, okay, it's for me, there might so be some confusion. List, Alrighty, um, I'll just nominate the next person. Okay. So, yeah, my name's Paul. I work on my Monero. Uh, community may know me as Endogenic. Um, you probably all already know who I am, so there's not too much introduction that's necessary. Um... I try to I try to investigate um, you know improvements to Monero that would be specifically related to usability, um, but uh, it takes time to do those things. So I haven't got a huge amount to show for it yet. That's me. Let's see. I'll nominate Arctic Mine next. Hi. Um, I got involved with the Monero in. Uh... 2014, um, as originally as an investor, and then as part of the core team. One of my main interests is actually the scaling of Monero, uh, the adaptive block size, making it so that everybody can use it. And that's going to be my sort of a particular area of interest in the, in the project. Um, so fees and scaling, etc. So we nominate, who's next? Um, we can do, uh, Ertz, I can't pronounce John? it. Uh, yeah, John? John. <laughs> okay. Erk yeah, John. Erk yeah. Yeah, alright. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, Erk I met Monero, like, um, one year ago, more or less. I was very interested more in, uh, the community, in, uh, how the community was working, and, I mean, and the point for me too it was amazing to see how people from all over the world join together to do something amazing like uh, Monero. Uh, that's what I mean. Now I'm trying to organize a little bit uh, the um, localization, the translation work, because uh, when I joined the seal, it was a little bit um, left to itself. So let's see what what's going to happen. I also try. To, I'm also learning some languages. Uh, everything for Monero. So let's see in a few months. I hope I can be more helpful than now. Awesome. Um, how about we move on to... Yeah, uh, I have much more to say. Yeah, how about we move on to Violently Peaceful? So hey guys, uh, I'm Violently Peaceful. Uh, I actually knew Monero, let's say six months ago. And I am a, a privacy advocate. I really like privacy in everything I do in my life. And when I find out about Monero, I said, oh my God, this is my cryptocurrency. And then I started to, I started to get involved in the community, uh, trying to help people whenever I can. 
And now my most recent project is with my Brazilian, my, it's not mine, it's for, for everyone, it's the Brazilian Community Hub that I'm creating to make Monero known in Brazil. So I know a lot of people in South America, they, they about 30 world countries, so Monero privacy is very important you know, for, for the government and everyone who tracks the money or whatever is happening. So I'm trying to get more people from South America to know more about Monero. And after the community is, is up and running, I want to help Urchitione with the localization project so we can <laughs> translate more content to Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, so we can get even more people to know about Monero. Awesome, thank you. Um, I see John Allen, you're here. Would you like to give a few words? <laughs> Hi, how are you? So I'm John Allen, I'm John, and uh, yeah, I'm a privacy advocate. Um, I came to Monero about a year and a half ago. And um, I really like it just because I feel it's, you know, it comes from the right angle, you know. I think uh, it's got the smartest people in it. Um, and I think uh, it's just simply maybe the most altruistic of the cryptocurrencies and the, the least scammy one. And um, I'm also a technological evangelist. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of early adopter of things. I try to be anyway. So at the moment, I just want to see where this whole scene goes. I really like the people in this community. I think they're really nice. I think they're intelligent. I think they're helpful and collaborative. And uh, uh, yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm helping Paul a little bit in my spare time I'm working on the My Monero iOS app. Um, and yeah, hopefully eventually I'll be able to contribute directly to Core. It's just a little bit tricky because um, there's a steep learning curve there. That's it. Okay, thank you. So uh, next we have Ray Rock. Yo, okay, so my name is my name is Diego Salazar. I'm known as Rodar in the community. I found Venero this year in January, so I haven't been here super long. Uh, I just do anything that needs to be done, primarily um, I'm a web developer, I'm a designer. Um, uh, both me and my wife, we work, we do this stuff together, and uh, both of us have had a, a wonderful time working on Monero-related projects and, and getting stuff up. So, for example, I did the uh, official Monero website as well as um, uh, like MoneroIntegrations.com for Surhack, and you know, it's basically um, I'm, I'm also working on Monero.io, um, a website for them, and so. But anything else that needs to be done, uh, I, I try to get involved. Um, so I set up recently the Taiga and the Mattermost with Pigeons. Um, yeah, so um, if anybody here is interested in getting connected or finding a place to uh, integrate themselves into Monero, get involved, uh, feel free to send me a message uh, on, on Reddit. On uh, You can sign up for the Mattermost. Uh, which I will put the link here, getmonero.org, um, and just just find a way to contact me. I'm everywhere, um, and I'll get you involved. Yeah, excellent. Um, and then last, we have uh, Alvin Joel Santos. Do you want to talk for a second? We have Alvin Joel Santos. Hey, Alvin. Hey, Alvin. He might be listening. <clears throat> well, you can you can feel free to uh, speak whenever you're interested. If you're interested. Uh, and then uh, Binary Fate just joined. Uh, so would you like to speak with us or are you just listening in? Okay. Yeah, he might just be, I know he said he has some poor connections. So, uh, so you, you might, be able to, might just be listening to so, um, so first, I would like to say that we have the name of the Monero Coffee Dash. We're not exactly stuck to this name. I know it's doing a GitHub issue. We've gone through several different names as possible contenders. Um, so if someone has a really, really good name, please uh, let us know and we can perhaps change it in the future. So we're not the tax. The Monero the Beverage of Choice chat. The Monero Beverage of Choice chat. I was, I thought like... That's true. Co coffee is garbage. Yeah. Whoa. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> coffee. Yeah, I was... I had tea this morning. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, we're not attached to that name, so you can choose whichever... You can suggest other ones and we can do that. Um, I just want to start with some news uh, just related to some of the stuff I've been doing. So, uh, two weeks from now, on the 20th of October, there will be a Monero meetup 
in Minneapolis, um, right here at the University of Minnesota campus. So if you're around, you come, there's free food and drinks. And I will have a new freshman presentation that I'll be post. So on my GitHub, I still have a copy of all the previous ones that I've done. But this one will be refreshed. Just, so it'll be better and meant for a less technical audience. So hopefully that'll be used to the community. And then finally, related to the Monero Meetup Kit. Um, I haven't, even though it hasn't seen much traction yet, I'm still working on it. And we're going to split it into two parts. One, so that we can get the info uh, pamphlet finished. Uh, and then he can get the money he needed to finish the pamphlet. And then I'm actually going to start purchasing some stuff so at the meetup I can give out some free merchandise. And then one other idea I had um, was for a webcam with the Monero logo on it. And I think that's a really good idea, but they cost about $3 each. And you need to buy at least like 250 of them at once. So that's just an idea I have. I guess we can pitch it to the community and figure out what. If they think that's worth it, I imagine we could, you know, give away or sell 250 webcam covers with a Monero logo. But it was just another idea I had that I thought was pretty relevant. But it was just another idea I had that I thought was pretty relevant. And then finally, just two more form fighting system updates from others. Uh, the Monero Observer is moved on so that he's asked for funding to continue his weekly newsletter of just the most recent news. For those of you who have not ever seen the uh, Monero Observer, it's a really good weekly publication to stay updated. And then also, also moved to funding required is the still groups, um, point of sale system. Um, and I imagine a lot of people do that all the time. And uh, that will be for and uh, that will be, yeah, that will be for just making it easier for people to accept an arrow and so forth. And we would like to work full time or spend more time rather working to improve an that way. Um, so how about we start with Paul? Do you want to talk more about the mind and arrow updates and so forth? Is there anything you'd like to speak to there? Sure. Um, so John Allen, John mentioned that he's been working with me on that a bit. What we've been doing is wrapping up a native Swift application that we've been writing, um, which is, it's actually basically done. It's been done for a good month now, I would say. Uh, um, and it's effectively just a re-implementation or a rewrite of the JavaScript application, um, but it's much more performant in mobile contexts. The user interface has been adapted slightly for a mobile context. For example, the uh, the wallet selector that you'll find on the send page. In the desktop application, it's a drop-down that you click on and uh, you know it pops up a little drop-down menu. But uh, under iOS, it makes sense to do that as a keyboard. So for example, that's displayed as a keyboard. Um, it has a bunch of really cool stuff that uh, we've just started bringing over to the JavaScript application. Um, Primarily, I would say the most interesting thing is the ability to use a custom server. So you can specify your own URL um, as long as the server is compatible with the My Monero, Open Monero type API, then everything will just work. Um, that's actually published right now in the JavaScript application as well. Another cool thing that we've done in the iOS app is we added DNSSEC uh, validation. Um, there was some unreliability on that, so I'm still finalizing. Uh, I'm still actually making that available in the app UI. I didn't make it available because it's just apparently not reliable 100% of the time, so I have to take another look at that. Uh, what else? Well, so, yeah, so there's the iOS app. Uh, we've actually uh, just started wrapping up a placement for the web wallet, so basically a new web wallet which uses the new JavaScript code. I actually uh, just pushed that to the JavaScript repo last night, uh, so everyone is free to check that out. Um, we'll be releasing that within, like, within the same context as the downloadable applications. Mm, yeah, so basically we've just been doing a whole bunch of like revamping and improvements to usability wherever possible. Uh, this is really just the, the beginning for my Monero. All of this is really just the foundation that we're going to add lots of really cool stuff on top of. Um, 
And so we have a whole bunch of neat stuff planned for the next, you know, three to four months. Um, so I'm really, really excited about what the near future holds as well. Hope you guys are too. Awesome. And so um, is the timeline still supposed to be getting it ready for the Globy fundraiser starts to get the exactly. full effect? Exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, people are going to need a convenient, like a really convenient way to use Monero. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely true that with any kind of web wallet or any kind of light wallet, there's that privacy trade-off. But as long as we educate people about that and we make sure that they realize what the trade-off is, I think that uh, it's going to be a good way to get people at least into the Monero economy. And once they have Monero, they can just use their Monero wallet via whatever client they want to in, in as uh, high a privacy level or security level as they want to. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely the plan. Okay, awesome. Um, and then uh, next, how about Ercione? We're going to talk about a little bit more about the translations, if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Were they a little closer this time? Yeah, so, sorry. I didn't hear because I have a really, really bad, bad connection right now. So can you say again, please? Um, just, the just the status of the translations. Uh, right now we just have uh, some platforms like uh, Weblate. With, uh, with Monero is that we need uh, really a lot, a lot. Yeah, sorry for my English, I know it's a little bit bad, but basically most of the app platform for some reason uh, a choice between two and then we found out that Weblate was very very hard to implement, three of us tried, somebody's still trying, so we are probably that's um, Parasu, uh -huh. if I remember right, his name, and he didn't find, so let's talk goes well and when we have there we can start making a proper um, organization for the translation because right now the biggest problem is uh, github where a lot of newcomers f find a lot of problems with that so this really makes very difficult to have everything well organized so hopefully within maybe this month the end of this month we can have a platform set up and we can start uh, localization in uh, as many languages as possible. And we are also for like a to-do list. So we also we always have um, uh, an update. I try to keep it updated. Um, and a to-do list of everything we have to do and uh, everything we left to do. So hopefully within next month we will see a lot of uh, new translations and new people that will help with this project, hopefully. <laughs> That's really Let's exciting. see what happens. And so, uh, the, just to clarify so for some of the people who might be new to a lot of these things, so the the list of work and progress items is on Taiga, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, and then if they want to communicate with you, they can do it in Monero translations on either IRC or Slack, they, correct? They, exactly. There is the, the IRC. Slack and Riot uh, Matrix uh, channels, there is everywhere. And on the channel, there is also the link to the Taiga to do list. And uh, everybody's free to come and ask uh, uh, anything. Uh, uh, we are awesome. Yeah, the, uh, I actually wanted to say, like, this is, this is very important, you know, like, the, the Monero translations, the like because we know that everyone speaks english like more or less and the united states it's the biggest market so we always focus on doing things in english but if you want if we want mass adoption we need to create content in other languages localization is very important so if if you know another language and you think you can help like it doesn't matter if it, this is your first translation project project i'm going to be working with Erchitione. Erchitione in the next couple of weeks to, to create you know a, a very a very simple and consolidated wiki or a, a manual to help people who are 
coming in to translate for the first time. Uh, we are looking for a platform, as I said, you know, so, so to make things easy. So because GitHub, we understand it's, it's kind of hard for, for people who never did this before. So, you know, if you speak another language, make sure to join us uh, on ERC or Mothermost, Matrix, whatever you guys want. But it's very, very important. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The point is not be scared about the, um, the, the capability, the, the person, because I'm a, um, I never, never did any, any localization in my life. I didn't know how to use GitHub when I started with Monero, basically. So I started learning everything. Genre. So it's something that if you really want to do it, you, in a few times you can just learn it. And if there is a lot of people ready to help you, so don't be scared. Just come and help us. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's how it works with open source projects, I suppose. It's, it's like, you don't really need any, I mean, of course, no one can like go through and just mess with the cryptography or something, but if someone wants to come and just contribute to like building additional resources or something, you you don't need to have previous experience. You can just hop right in and just start from there. So that's one thing I find very appealing in an open source project. Exactly. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Let's see. What else? Uh, so I noticed on GitHub recently that Monero Moo published or pushed out uh, the multi-sig N minus one of N updates. And for those who are familiar with multi-sig, I mean that's amazing. Um, and so you can see why that's like a big step forward. But for those of you who have never heard of like what multi-sig is, it's just the idea that you can have multiple people sign a certain transaction. So the most commonly explained use case is if I'm a merchant and you are buying something from me, and you're, let's suppose you're supposed to pay me one Monero, then you could transfer the Monero to me, but since I already have it, there's nothing that is forcing me to actually give it to you or what you purchased. So multi-sig N minus one of N is really important because it allows you to have an arbitrator in the middle. So they kind of hold the funds until I actually send you what you ordered and then they can release them to me. Or if I don't send you what you bought from me, then they can basically cancel or never actually send out the transaction. So, so Justin, is, uh, sorry to interrupt you when you're speaking. Is, is, is N minus one of N plus N of N now complete in the, in the code? Yeah, so if you look on GitHub, um, they're both, they both need further review. N of N has received, more, uh, has received some review. It needs a second or additional people looking at it though. N minus one of N was just pushed out earlier this week. So that one will still need to go through quite a bit of review. But things like that were are, are very helpful because it's necessary for Monero to have those features for it to work on systems like uh, like Open Bazaar, for instance. We need to have N minus one. And uh, even working better on things like BISC, like it would be much better to have those features. So, oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah. That guy Monero movie is amazing. Yeah, so just wanted to point that out because I noticed that one kind of, uh, it, it was maybe perhaps less seen and kind of went less noticed, but it's a big improvement. So I just wanted to make sure everyone uh, saw that coming out. Is anyone else aware of any large developments that have made their way in the past few weeks through uh, the pipeline? Well, I believe that uh, Saray and I think it might have been just Saray released a paper uh, formalizing sub-addresses, formalizing their review of sub-addresses. Mm -hmm. I think they're actually also uh, collaborating on reviewing multi-sig. So it'll be great for them to, okay. to publish that as well. It'll put a lot of confidence behind it. Definitely. So let me just push, let me point the, uh, the link for the multi-sig updates just in the chat to see uh, there so people can I think I should have what actually works now. It was kind of like now. But um, yeah, so originally it's under multi sig N of N, but if you scroll all the way down, it says um, now with N minus one of N ready for review. So uh, a lot of good work there, as always. And it looks I'm like someone. Excited. I'm excited that now uh, when someone on like or slash cryptocurrency says, you know, Monero doesn't have multi sig, I can say, fuck it, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have multi sig. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I, 
And um, is Ar is Arctic Mine still here? Arctic Mine. Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. So, can you just uh, clarify for us? Um, so, for things like sub addresses and multi sig, will we need to have another hard fork to enable those in Monero, or can those be added without a hard fork? I wouldn't be able to give you a say that, but my understanding is, strictly speaking, multi-sig does not require hard fork. Okay. But it could very likely be added at a hard fork. Okay. Just because we hard fork every uh, uh, every six months. So, but my understanding is, strictly speaking, it doesn't need one. Okay. Perfect. I guess if we, I guess when they have a... Uh... Rough CT implemented uh, down the line. I guess multi sig. I heard will have to be reestablished re for that, right? Yeah, that yes. was one of the concerns. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and that would definitely be a, a hard fork. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here, and can you can Arctic Mine or someone else explain me like I'm five what multi sig is let's say for the people who are listening to us and doesn't even know what we are talking about well essentially what you're saying is you have a set of Monero and there's and you can spend it with instead of just one signature as it's the normal situation you would use uh, two out of three or two out of two signatures to spend that Monero that's the basic essence so you're allowed Think of it like a, a bank account with more than one signing officer on it. Okay. So you could okay. say two signatures have to sign. Yeah, etc. That's literally the concept. And this is this is used for uh, protecting against uh, against what exactly? Well, well, I mean, there's a lot of situations where you may want to have two out of three signatures, for example, an escrow, I think was discussed earlier, is a good example, or a business that requires two signing officers, uh, or a charity that requires more than one signing officer. So that would be why you would use that. Yeah, I think like the primary, the primary uh, use case is where you have in an environment where you know you, you you've got a buyer and, and a seller and you and they don't trust each other, um, and that happens a lot. You know when you're trying to use private currencies and especially when it's always on the internet and you know so maybe you're buying something off someone on a forum. Uh, you know it doesn't matter what it is, whether you know no matter what it is. When, if you don't trust the guy, then you can have an arbitrator who who also requires uh, his input on the signature, a trusted arbitrator. That now can control it. So, so you, you have a scenario where you you do have some kind of uh, you know arbitrator or trusted entity. So, and they, they monitor the transaction to make sure that the funds are on, are only sent to the to the seller in in the event where the buyer is tubby. It's kind of like a PayPal, right? But with an important difference is that you don't have to actually strictly uh, trust the arbitrator. So, for example, if the buyer and the seller agree in the transaction, the arbitrator doesn't come in. But if there's a dispute between the buyer and the seller, then the, the seller and the arbitrator or the buyer and the arbitrator can sign. Good point. Yeah, good point. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much, John Allen and Arctic Mine. It was a very, very thoughtful explanation. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just looking through GitHub real quick. So let's see what else. Uh, so, if anyone else that's in the chat has a question, um, you can feel free to unmute yourself at this point and just ask us the question, and then we'll be able to get through you. Or, of course, you could ask in the chat if you prefer. Um, we intended for this to happen as a live stream over YouTube, but it didn't quite work out that way. But um, at least we're still able to do something here. Is Diego still here? Um, let me check. Yeah, I'm, I'm back now. Yeah, I just want to say personally, Diego, I think you did a great job on, on the websites. I think they're really, really important. And, uh, you know, the the clarity of the site, uh, when I look at it now, uh, it's just fantastic. And uh, I think it was absolutely essential. The old site, although functional, it really sucked, in my view. And it didn't feel, it felt weird when you were on it. It didn't feel like a good site. So you did a great job there, so welcome. Yeah, thanks very much, man. I appreciate that. Who did the uh, CSS on, on the on the subreddit? Because that's also great. 
Uh, Shy and I collaborated on that. I would say he did about 80% of the work, and I did about 20% of the work. So it's also uh, really good. It looks much more modern now. Yeah. I've seen uh, Shy get a lot more active in some of the threads on our cryptocurrency. Uh, <laughs> just uh, making sure that people are aware of the uh, information he compiled in that comparison chart. Question: Why why can't we be like stellar lumens, man? Oh, why can't we just uh, by, by just, you mean random pumps out of nowhere, or do you mean just give money to whoever we want? No, man. How come we can't have a cool name like them? Oh, um, I don't well, know. I, I think, could. I think Monero is a pretty chill name, but uh, it's chill, but it does, it's like stellar lumen. Anyway, <laughs> Diego, let's fork. Okay, all right, I'm down. Yeah, but We've Monero is very international. <laughs> Come on, at least we have the, the the mistakes people do with Monero. Mondero, Montero, Bombero. Morano. Yeah. <laughs> Moro. No one gets that, you know? It makes us unique. <laughs> yeah. It's... Question, question. When, when are we getting Rock Protocol? Well, when are we getting Ray? <laughs> Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with Wraith is, um, it's something that is supposedly upcoming for a certain cryptocurrency that has received a lot of additional Reddit and Twitter attention specifically called Verge. And it, uh, it only currently obfuscates an IP address by option. It's not even a, like a mandatory or default feature. And a Wraith protocol is just adding stealth addresses. It's literally just a rebrand of stealth addresses, which Monero has had since it started. So, yeah, I mean, I know that it was a joke, but I just wanted to clarify that uh, people who are unfamiliar with Wraith uh, just, just know that it's the same as stealth addresses, and it is only one of the three features that Monero uses right now. Right? So, you know, literally does not concern us at all. Um, so... I should add... Yeah, you can I should add that um, Verge can't scale. How so? Because it's got a fixed number, maximum number of coins. This is a oh. problem with a lot of coins, not just... Uh, um, so you, you, you get into all sorts of uh, problems with, with scaling the block size if you have a total maximum number of coins. Mm -hmm. Monero is pretty well, but the only one that does this right. So uh, we had someone come in, I, I think I'll answer this one, where it says, what is with the, uh, like, uh, Pundejo Monero? And uh, that is an initiative that I've been working on for a long time with several other people here uh, that are also in this chat. And it's, uh, I haven't made any announcements or anything yet, but it will be a supportive organization to help Monero. So we're not planning to, like, replace any of the existing team or whatever, of course, I said, oh, don't worry, Arctic Mine or whatever. But um, we literally just want to be a group of people with just some more solid organizational tools to just support on the side. It's a side project to just help people out. And uh, we are working on getting it established as a nonprofit and so forth. I hope to talk a lot more about this later, but that's kind of what the sneak peek is uh, for that, I suppose. So uh, again, so, oh, yeah. go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Some latency. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it's just a project that we've been working on. Again, coming soon is violently peaceful put there. Uh, so no deadline or anything. Uh, currently, I've kind of been wrapped up with classes and interviews and so forth. But uh, I would like to. I'm setting myself up to have more time in the future, and I think that having a supportive project would help the Monero community. So that way, we could have some organization reach out. Not necessarily, it would not represent the Monero project itself, but it would be an easy way for us to talk to merchants and say, okay, well, would you like to add Monero? Are you familiar with Monero? Things like that. And so that's just where we come in. Um, and of course, everyone else can continue doing that, but it might be beneficial if there's it's coming from a foundation or so, so forth rather than anything else. And again, it will be the whole purpose will be to completely support the Monero project. That, that's what it is, um, and it's just allowing to have more infrastructure in place. So we're open. We're still in the middle of planning everything out, so expect more stuff later. But again, this is still very early, 
And uh, but it's something that I've worked on for some time. And again, a lot of other people have worked here too. Um, I suppose I can speak up. They'd like to be associated. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just something that I'm really passionate about. And that way, we can perhaps in the future be the ones doing things like the Monero meetup kit. So it's easier for us to tell people about Monero and so forth. Justin, is this a is this a different effort or the same effort as the nonprofit that Rick is talking about? Uh, I like Ricardo. Yeah, uh, Fluffy Pony. Uh, no, I, I haven't. It's 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 different than I haven't. Okay, uh, you should definitely chat with him about it okay. uh, because I'm sure that you guys could help each other. Mm -hmm. There's been discussion on and off on having some sort of nonprofit organization for the project as a whole. Yeah. Um, cool things like trademarks and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's been sort of an on and off topic of discussion yeah. in the past. But right now it's totally informal. Mm -hmm. um, a decentralized collective, shall we call it? Yeah, I, when I was looking at some of the previous discussions, uh, many people were saying, okay, well, why doesn't the Monero project itself just become a nonprofit? Because they would surely qualify. But I remember some of the concerns were that the project wants to be multinational. They don't want to be restricted or need to respond to a certain jurisdiction. So if the project itself became a registered nonprofit in the U.S., it might expose itself to greater risk and so forth. Whereas um, this way you can still have the benefits of a supportive nonprofit, but if something, if for some reason they don't want it to operate or anymore or so forth, then the project itself would still continue on. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely have to talk to Ricardo then. Um, I know that uh, uh, I've talked to several other members of the project, and so it's just something that, uh, again, we've been loosely putting together, but I'd love to collaborate on something like that. Yeah, because I believe it's very important, like that the, the foundation that uh, it becomes a separate entity of the Monero development team or Monero the project itself because as Justin said uh, Monero is, is something international it's a it's a living project that no one owns and answers to no jurisdiction other than Monero's jurisdiction I don't know how to say that in English jurisdiction uh, thank you very much so it's, jurisdiction. It's, very, it's very important to, to make a separate entity and I believe like if uh, Fondajo Monero gets going, you know, it's going to be it's going to be using another logo. It's going to be using all its uh, media and things because Monero is another entity. Fondajo Monero is only there to support it and then it's going to be applied on as a non-profit in United States and it's going to be entering for United States legis legislations. So separate things so no worries on oh, okay if this happens what's going to be happening with monero it's two separate entities okay yeah so thank you uh ludovico for a great question there um i know that that's kind of been heading around a little bit in irc and so maybe that clarifies uh some people's thoughts about a lot of these things um does anyone else have any questions again feel free to speak up uh we'll probably continue for uh, I would say either another 10 minutes or 15 minutes or until uh, I suppose if we have more things to talk about, we can always keep going as long as people are available. Um, but uh, so I'm just looking through in the meantime when people come up with stuff to talk about, just the top posts of the past month on the Monero subreddit. And um, some of the recent news is that uh, you can use Monero uh, when purchasing things from Purism. So if you would like to buy a hardened laptop or crowdfund their new phone platform, you can always purchase things from Purism, which is a very private-centric like a hardware manufacturer or sales. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, of course, we're not going to be paid to say that on the paid place in our media. Um, <laughs> but uh, just something that we found interesting. Um, and of course, if, just in case you haven't heard yet, uh, there is now a Monero application, a lightweight application or I guess rather an SPV application that works on uh, Android. It's on the Google Play Store, so you no longer need to use 
free wallet or use Lime and Arrow in web browser. You can download a native application on your phone that won't steal your money. Uh, you have to manually choose a remote node, but it's a great way of going forward. It has all the functionality there, so it's a great step forward for usability for people. Uh, even if it's not quite as easy as if they just download it in like Jax or something, but it's still much closer than we were before. Uh, while we're waiting for my Monero and other uh, tools to come up. Okay, does anyone? I I don't want to monopolize the conversation. So if anyone else wants to discuss anything that they find interesting, or I've got a question. Yeah. So uh, Monaruho, the the wallet that you just mentioned. What is a good term that we should use to refer to that kind of wallet? Because it's not a light wallet, but it's not like a, a full wallet, you know, where you're connecting to a locally run daemon. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose it's basically just a, a full wallet that connects to a remote node. Yeah, I know that in the past, uh, we've made the distinction between like an SPV and a lightweight wallet. I'm not sure if that name is really helpful for most, most people. <laughs> But, uh, well, especially is, for Monero, yeah, because uh, you know SPV is all about like the verification based on like Merkle root and stuff, and you don't have to have the entire UTXO set. Yeah, so in that case, I don't know. I guess we can come up with a better name. I know right now people are informally calling it a lightweight wallet, but of course they don't hand the UT over to the node. So mm. I suppose a new name is in order. Well, what is the difference? It's um between SPV and the lightweight, so I don't get it. Uh, real quick, John Allen, the difference is that uh, when you have people, when you have a Monero wallet, uh, it kind of goes one of two ways. So either you have all of your keys locally and you request all of the TXO set from the node and then you scan them all locally to figure out which ones are yours. Um, okay. And that's in relatively intensive just because you need to have all of these copied over to you. And in general, if everyone on the network did this, it would put a lot of stress on the node. That are open. Okay. Um, but uh, a lightweight wallet, instead, you give your view key to the node, and the node can scan them locally and only give you the TXO sets that you actually need that are relevant to you. I got it. Um, so is Monero U? Is that a or Monero whatever you pronounce that it? That one does not have the lightweight functionality. No. So, okay, so it doesn't send the view key over to to the the, the node, right? Correct. It does not. Okay, well, say if you take my Monero on iOS, uh, that does send the view key to the my Monero backend, right, right, Paul? Right. Right, okay, cool. Okay, that's true now. Okay, so then it's it must be quite computationally expensive on the Monero G on the Android uh, wallet, is it? It takes several minutes. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to search for the first time, yes. Okay. I um, think you, know, you should be able to synchronize... Sorry. No, after you... You should be able to synchronize it ahead of time. Because it's uh, it's like it's the same thing as if you have a daemon in your wallet. You you connect to you you got your daemon, then you're gonna synchronize the wallet with the daemon. So you can do that through a, a fast connection, and then you have the portable wallet. Yeah. Yeah. That's because nice. once you synchronize all your transactions, you don't have to keep doing that. Yeah, I think for because obviously you know it's it's it, we, like privacy is paramount. For me, probably the most elegant solution is probably one where the view key is sent to, to, to the node, but the node is run by you. So like, oh, of you know, the, the equivalent of running the My Monero style wallet with um, an open Monero backend that you hosted in your home. You know that kind of way? Yes, that that is what a user should do if they want both the most convenience and the most privacy, is they should run their own node and have get, basically trust themselves with their own view key, um, which right. since they have any way, it's, it's good. Um, but uh, right now the compromise is that uh, if users don't want to do that, they have to uh, either put stress on the system or they need a series of nodes or they provide the view, the view key for convenience. But there's also an advantage to send to somebody else's node. From a privacy perspective, if you connect to it directly, uh, remotely, because someone who's monitoring the node, they don't know what trans who's the who's the originated transactions. Yeah. So currently, there is an argument that you could uh, might benefit more by using someone else's node for privacy to push out these transactions. 
rather than your IP address, like uh, your unmasked IP address. Hopefully, when Colbury comes out, this risk is completely eliminated, and then there would be no no privacy incentive to use someone else's name. Did I get that correct, Dark Art of Mind? Well, you're adding another level on top of Colbury, basically, by doing that. Okay. Speaking of Cobra, by the way, I know Anonymous and Moroccan are working on it pretty hard. Is there any kind of, you know, percentage of how, how that's going? Is it like halfway there or, or the quarter of the way there or where are we? It's a good question. Yeah, so... Um, it is a good question. It, the, the oft answer that we get, uh, it's done when it's done, you know, type thing. And so uh, very recently uh, they have finished a, a test net for... Uh, some of the Kavri things that is showing a lot of, um, you know, bugs and stuff that need to be ironed out. And getting that test net up was a, uh, a multi-month long project. And so now, uh, for the most part, as soon as they iron out a few of um, the things that the test net is consistently showing and stuff, from my understanding, okay, and I will be the first to admit that a lot of the stuff that Anonymous and Rock and Melanoid talk about goes over my head. Um, so from my understanding, uh, as they keep ironing things out, we get closer and closer to the alpha release. I'm going to give a very, very unofficial, informal. Don't do uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I won't do it. I won't do it. Um, <laughs> I, I was actually going to turn that into a joke. I was going to say I was going to give a very <laughs> unofficial, informal thing of soon. Um, but nice. um, there you go. Uh, I, yeah, man, it, it's done when it's done, and. Uh, you know, just as with Monero, you know, security software, privacy software, like you don't just want to roll out a release for the sake of, uh, of rolling out a release, you know, uh, you want to make sure that everything is functional, everything works, that we can confidently say this is this product will help your privacy. It will not leak, you know, data that we don't want it to leak. And so uh, Calvary, Calvary is, a, is a very ambitious project. It you know uh usually this type of thing when you look at i2p and tor and stuff i mean uh these things have large teams you know many many different programmers and at the moment primarily we have anonymal uh we have Moroccan melanoy and then we've got uh, a new guy who's been coming in uh siesta uh or sesta something like that but so so we got like three people <laughs> and we got me i don't do any coding you know i i just do everything else to free up their time so they can code uh but I like, I'd like I, I completely understand, by the way, because I'm, you know, even in the work I do, a little bit of work on the open source stuff, and, and like, you don't want to be working for deadlines, because that's not how that stuff works. And I also really appreciate that people are dedicating their free time, for free in many cases, but it's, and so I, I do get the kind of thing of not giving dates I already do, and I respect it. And But I still think it would be useful if we had some kind of barometer for a kind of progress, even if that is just to kind of say, uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, closer to the finish line than, than, than not. You know, because I feel like a lot of the time, uh, a lot of people kind of, they, they need some kind of metric on, on where things are. And I think it would be useful to just have some kind of update uh, or even kind of a roadmap of, of like the milestones that have to be reached before we can use it, you know? Well, I'll say one thing. Uh, the moment that it becomes able to be embedded within an application like My Monero, we're going to put it in. And we can do a branch, you know, where people can just test it on their own with the understanding that it's not uh, necessarily going to be 100% production ready. Yep. Um, so, I mean, hopefully that'll be one kind of benchmark for how ready it is. Yep. Uh, I, I, I would suspect that introducing it to the baseline Monero is going to be a higher bar because that's this, you know, protocol that a lot of people are relying on and it's it's not a sort of second layer application sort of thing um at the same time it's an open source project so you know as long as people have the understanding that it's experimental i don't think that there's going to be any harm really with people using it and it could actually probably to have people actually using it uh could actually probably help discover a bunch of edge cases um so Maybe what we could do is try to help provide a, a very safe environment for testing this experimental technology, um, and that could help us uh, ease the process of release a little bit. Yeah. I suppose the end game is to have it integrated into the Monero daemon, is it? Exactly. Yeah, that's basically the end game, yes. That's going to be cool. 
But one of the one of the cool things about Calvary, and that, it, honestly, it's what sold me on the Monero project as a whole, is the fact that, that you know it is uh, uh, designed so. Well, not, and that's the cool thing. It's not designed for Monero. Like, it's designed for applications of which Monero is one. You know, and because it's uh, it's so it's semi altruistic in nature, which I've never really found anything else in the crypto space that is like this. Mostly anything like you look at Particle, you know, and they they made this whole, this huge market platform, but it only serves the Particle coin. You know, um, it has no other application beyond the Particle coin, and so many cryptocurrencies. Uh, will develop new things that really just just benefit their coin. I mean, obviously, if it's open source, you can fork it and you can you know apply it to your coin. But Covery is actually made um, to be agnostic and uh, with with a great lofty intention of trying to be a privacy software that most applications can use. You know, and, and to improve their anonym anonymity. And then uh, just one thing I want to say, just like as something that's been really good with the Covery project. Um, I really like that the website has been translated to Spanish, Russian, uh, French, and Italian. So, uh, like, we're making progress there and making sure that Covery will be open to people when when it eventually is released. Diego, how much yeah. of the Russian translation did you do? Diego? Um, the, the Russian for the Covery website? Yeah. Just curious, because I know that you're um, studying Russian. We're, right, um, and Maria helps me to do all the right. Maria is my wife. Uh, she helps right. me to do um, all the Russian stuff. I will be honest, I did none of this. In fact, oh. when we came in, um, she and I were like, okay, you know, let's uh, let's let's sit down and let's take a look at this. And it like it was a lot of it was done, and we're we were flabbergasted but oh, really? uh, i has okay. yeah, yeah yeah it's bizarre it's just like where did this come from <laughs> but uh and then so, mm. so she looked at it and it's not just like google translate type thing i mean maybe it is but it's really good but she's like this is this is pretty good my wife's from russia um so uh but i hesitate to do um get coffee.org is undergoing a uh restructuring and redesign i wouldn't say redesign it's undergoing a restructuring um so i'm not focusing on on translating what is currently there um, because uh, it's going to be changing soon so that's what i'm working on for covering okay awesome uh, does anyone else have any questions or talk about uh otherwise yeah i, I have a i have a quick something yeah. real quick uh just what what is the uh, i realize there's gonna be too much pushback and this will probably not happen but what what is the likelihood about seeing about doing like the dev meetings in a venue like this I oh, think we can get stuff done a tough. lot quicker. I think uh, you're probably going to have a lot of pushback from that. Yeah, I don't, I don't expect it to fly. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't want yeah. to be hurt. I mean, well, stuff. Uh, First, um, maybe the starters. Go ahead. Let's say that, the, that we can troubleshoot the bugs out with this first. Like get the technical aspects of it out of the way. And so and then people might be interested in doing that. Okay. Could be like sort of a, a secondary channel that we can run concurrently with the the IRC meeting. But I mean, I'm thinking that I mean, this is a learning curve for us. I mean, we had a few technical issues getting it going, um, and, and as we refine it, then that's something that could be provided to the community. And not necessarily I'm... just the bed meetings. It could be, for example, the community meetings, or um, that could be done that way. Yeah, yeah, the only the only thing that I was concerned about with the dev meetings was uh, well, a handful of things. One of them is that JavaScript would probably be a requirement for doing this sort of uh, video conference. I know uh, the the WebRTC thing, is so that a lot of people block WebRTC. Right. The second thing is that uh, this is not super conducive to uh, asynchronous or concurrent chat, which is something that can be done with IRC. It's fun though. It's fun comparing yes, what that's, we're that's drinking. That's a very good point. Other. Yeah, I, I I like what you what Arctic Mind said. This like this might work probably better for the community meeting, um, but uh, because it's not it's not quite as much. Uh, I don't know. I, I, Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that the wrong. asynchronous work <laughs> thing applies as much to the community meeting as it does to the dev meeting. You know, because uh, yeah. Anyway, this is my opinion. 
Mm, sounds about right. I mean, the dev meeting just seems to be like very time constrained and like we want to get shit done, sort of thing. I don't know. Maybe maybe we should bring it up at the next dev meeting. Yeah, we can at least bring it up at the next community meeting and see what people's interests yeah. are. I personally don't like too much the idea of the video meeting or the... I don't know, but... Uh, I don't know if many people are up for it, I would go for it, but honestly, I prefer a much more IRC, it's much, I don't know, more visual for me, I'm not a big uh, talker, so... Yeah, I definitely joined the video chat. Yeah, I, I saw some people's concerns, so some concerns I had, uh, for instance, so I know that I asked uh, Sirhack if he wanted to join this call, and he said that he can, like, read and write English, but he can't speak or listen to English very well. So that's an example of another boundary that might exist yeah. uh, with these sort of, with these like in-person meetings compared to over chat. And I know that I asked a lot of other people if they had interest in this, a lot of other longtime developers and longtime contributors and so forth. And most of the uh, ones that have been along, around for a long time and have stuck with the project I imagine those people, or at least from what I noticed, they are the ones that are more likely to uh, pass on these sort of video calls. So uh, I suppose, I imagine they will always have to be some some additional thing that can be used. Uh, and we'll kind of see if some people are okay joining without either speaking or without video or whatever people are comfortable with. But, um, but um, yeah, I suppose we can try a few things out, especially with the community meeting. I think I think that's a good test bed for these sort of things, and, um, and uh, see if see if that works out. Yeah, it could be good as sort of like a concurrent option. Like we can kind of hang out with each other yeah. while we're doing those IRC meetings or something, and just sort of like you know look at each other and <laughs> make funny faces and whatever. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. So that complimentary, rather than replacing it. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. But I think there is definitely some value in having these video meetings compared to over text, which is why I decide, which why I suggested having this first one. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just to say that I agree it's complimentary, but I wouldn't do any sort of dev meeting. Um, Team on three in video because uh, I, I think additionally to people that might have issue just express themselves in English it's also a matter of uh, understanding for many non-English speakers uh, it's much easier to just read uh, rather than understand especially uh, <clears throat> um, people that speak English uh, as a mother tongue, I think uh, for, for many people it would be too difficult, I guess. Oh, we need so those new Google Mario Translate Mario. earbuds. <laughs> if we have those, then, then we can do video meetings. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only downside is that they spy on everything that you post, or that, that, that you hear, so... Or improving the analytics, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think we just had one last question that just came through Reddit, uh, and it was just saying, has anyone ever read the book Attack of the 50-Foot Blockchain? I have never heard of it, but has anyone ever seen it? Apparently, uh, that episode was with the author on Bitcoin Uncensored. Um, has anyone heard of that book before? Just putting it out there. It's a trick question. It doesn't exist. Does it not exist? Yeah, it doesn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thought I'd ask. Okay, so unless anyone has anything uh, else, I just want to say, say, binary fade. If you're still there, I just want to say, I, I love your website, man. I use it all the time, and I just wanted to personally say it, it's fucking great. I love it. Thanks, thanks, appreciate it. Okay, so Way to go, John. Now this is no longer PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think with that, this is our first um, rough. Monero coffee chat, and I'm glad that we were able to continue having it. Um, I believe that I, I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope we can continue to find new ways for it to 
hopefully work on YouTube and also to incorporate this into other other aspects of the Monero project. And um, yeah, if you're watching this now, I hope to post this on YouTube if everything works properly, just a recording afterwards. Um, I've been recording it locally, so I just need to make sure it actually did it properly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'd like to appreciate everyone's time. Uh, again, sorry that we started about a half an hour late, but yeah, I really uh, appreciate all of you for being here, and I hope that we continue having this as a monthly thing to keep trying things out and allow the Monero community just to be more accessible. So, thanks everyone. Yeah, I had fun. Well done, Justin. You did well here. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Great job. Okay, bye everyone again. Uh, if you have anything else, you can always post on our subreddit, uh, which is our Reddit. Uh, go to our website, getmonero.org. And of course, um, you can always follow us, follow the Monero Project on Twitter or Facebook or whatever you'd like. So, yeah, thanks for your time. Um, of course, and then one last thing, of course, IRC, we have a Slack relay and we have. Mattermost relay that we've spent a lot of time trying to get people to start using that too. Um, so yeah, it's really easy to follow the Monero project, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye everyone. Thanks, Justin. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.